Today's webinar is about garbage pets in your way and here to stay. Without further ado, uh, Eddie Ayub. Eddie Ayub is an artist and 30-year participant in Winnipeg's art community. He is artistic director of Wanda Coop's community art organization, Art City. Joining as a volunteer in 2003, Ayub has directed Art City programming since 2007. He is co-chair of the Manitoba Artist Run Centers Coalition. Mark. Representing Manitoba as chair of the National Artist Run Centers and Collectives Conference, ARCA Board. Ayub is passionate about environmental sustainability, social justice, decolonial practices, and designing art programming that addresses these themes in a constructive and hopeful way. So um, this is Art City. We're a community art organization uh, that offers free programs. We're based in West Broadway. Uh, they're at 616 Broadway. But uh, we do programming throughout the inner city and even outside the city. Sometimes even traveling, uh, like to you know communities and you know, even like a little further north of the city. Uh, but most of our activities happen here in Winnipeg, uh, and we are founded by uh, Wanda Coop, who's an artist. That's Wanda in her studio. She lived on Spent Street, right around the corner from Art City, for like a few decades, um, and was doing a lot of community work through the like '80s and '90s. Uh, with kids in the neighborhood, mostly teenagers, and then uh, sort of like got organized and like, uh, you know, got, got up and running in this space that had been a, a nightclub, but then had been abandoned for quite some time. Same address, same, same storefront. And so this is Art City like in the early, early, early days. This is what it used to look like. And this is what the in interior looked like, still pretty much like an unrenovated nightclub, black and white tiles on the floor and mirrors on the ceiling. And there was a disco ball dusty old disco ball hanging off the ceiling but uh, so you know a lot of the materials that we had in there were like more like donated chairs and things that were sort of scraped together with a very tiny almost non-existent budget and here's what the studio looks like today it's been modified a lot that's the same room you're looking at but here's the studio and it's very busy full of uh people mostly kids but um we're open to all ages so you will have everyone from like little tiny tots all the way up to seniors participating in any workshop on any given day. Um, so as a result, you've got siblings of different ages that can participate at the same time. Uh, parents and kids can come together and make art together. And then a lot of kids just come and make friends with each other. And that's a place where they can make, you know, hang out, even if they uh, come from different schools or you know, you know, they, 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 or different streets or whatever, but then they develop these relationships over a long period of time. And, um, and uh, it's just that kind of environment where there's a lot of really good relationship building between kids and staff and, and everyone that's, that's involved. Uh, so when I say kids, I mean like the participants. So here's Shanice with blue hair. Uh, Shanice was, uh, grew up coming here as a young child and is now part of the staff team and gets to mentor young kids that come to the program. And I just got a, a few examples of uh, volunteers working with participants. This is a staff member, obviously like, you know, the boundaries are not respected uh, all the time with staff because we have these sorts of like, you know, we just get to know them and they get become pretty open, comfortable with us. And then we bring um, artists in from the community who have their own art practice. And, and they're like, you know, continually we're bringing in people uh, to share their knowledge and their practice in our studio. And they're not a regular staff, but they're, um, but they're special guests who might spend like a day or a week uh, with us, depending on the scope of the project. So, you know, here's just, and, and, and the workshop in that case is based on their art practice. So we don't look on the internet and find art and, and sort of copy it. Uh, we, we, it's always like anytime we reference an artist's work, it's with, in partnership with that artist. Uh, and then the work we're doing is, is based on, on what they do. We also have uh, community members come in and work uh, alongside the young kids. So here's Lawrence Bolio, who's like a senior artist in the community. So even if he's not a guest artist, he's there working alongside the young ones. And then they get to inspire each other in their work. And, or just goof around, like in this case, this is a more recent shot. Um, and one of the ways that we develop programming, aside from having guest artists come and share their practice, is to hold youth council. Youth Council is a meeting where we like evaluate programs and kids give their ideas and we write it all down and then it, it, we'll see things happen if you know either like right away in the next month or you know sometimes if they're like more of a seasonal idea then we just wait but eventually everybody's ideas 
become a real workshop. That means sometimes we have to do a slime workshop because the kids demand it. And that's not necessarily like a, you know, like it, it doesn't have really artistic merit, uh, but it's fun. And so we do, we do have to listen and do as, as the kids request when that, you know, once in a while. And there's a few of the mediums that we also work in. Here's uh, digital photography, film photography, film photography. We have a dark room in the basement. Uh, ceramics. This is from our last this past summer when we took all of our programming outside. Uh, and then you know, kids get to like paint. Uh, here's some outdoor uh, painting program. This is just altering like images from art history. Um, or just just hanging out, uh, you know, making whatever kind of drawing you want, with, just with markers and paper or pencils. So sometimes we keep things pretty simple. Sometimes people make self guided projects like this mixed media house. Uh, we have digital media. So that actually, this is in the same room I'm in right now. So we have programming that happens in here where where young people get to learn how to use all these different lights and equipment and computers and programs. Uh, and then we do super traditional workshops as well. So this is this is a uh, a workshop we did this not this past summer but the one before, and we learned the traditional way of tanning a deer hide from um, Lana Sinclair, who uh, who joined us and grew up on the trap lines up north and like is carrying tradition uh, with her that like has it's you know that's the way things have been done for like thousands of years. Here's Audrey Logan. Um, this past summer taking us through the gardens and we were like uh, medicine picking. So she taught participants how to identify medicines and what their uh, traditional use were. We use that as inspiration to pick more plants. Uh, we use this process to like distill pigment out of the plants and then create drawing ink. And from there, that sort of informed the palette for this giant mural that we painted that's now in Assiniboine Park. Uh, so if you're in Assiniboine Park, keep an eye out for that work. So this is, but you know, we, we do this work by, in the theme of, of trying to respect nature and study nature and spend time with it and think of our place in, in nature. Uh, we, we have an indigenous art program every week and during the summer uh, we get to do a lot of big like install work. We built a traditional wigwam with willow branches outside and that's still out, actually, that's still out there. It's actually, it was built with such integrity that it's still out in the park south of here. And then we, you know, we um, also engage in like singing and drumming with, with special guests and teach the culture so everybody gets to learn together and enjoy. And it actually really makes people feel like safe and connected and um, like confident uh, moving forward and, you know, doing all these different art projects in a really good way and getting to know each other. And, and uh, you know, kids get to grow up. This is the art squad. So once, once kids reach, reach a certain age, they get to join that group which is a little more in-depth programming and they get to do more advanced stuff and, and stick together as a group for months at a time. And, um, and then you know, they do things like walk with the West Broadway Bear Clan once a week and present ideas to each other. So they start to get getting really mindful about where they're at, what do they stand for? And they actually get into like expressing these ideas, you know, beyond art objects and, and, and visual art. Also like how do they going to use, um, their thoughts to express themselves and the things they believe in. Once after this summer, we're back inside. Here's actually a, a photo from our basement programming when we're doing um, when we're doing uh, like painting, but you know, or ceramics. But it's all the same. It's people gathered around uh, sharing these art experiences together and, and having access to all these different materials. Now I'm going to show you a few examples of uh, situations where we work in a very specific theme. Uh, this is called, uh, this was a, our, the last in-person parade we made was in 2019. Obviously, this is before the pandemic over the last two years. So we haven't been able to make an in-person parade, but we called this one, What the World Needs Now. And we asked all the participants to brainstorm, what do they think the world needs now? And they came up with four main themes, you know, after all, like, all, you know, writing all down all the ideas and, um, and, and looking at all the different concept drawings that happened. So the main themes were uh, Operation Earth Rescue, so that's like environmental stewardship, um, people helping people. So there was like a lot of awareness about the need for affordable housing for everybody, uh, or you know, for rent. Housing is a major issue, and we deal with a lot of people who struggle uh, trying to you know make a go of it and find affordable housing, or sometimes not, and uh, that causes all sorts of like. Um, 
turmoil, you know, if, if, if housing is not affordable or available. So that was a major theme um, for the parade floats we were making, and that turned into like a bunch of actual houses. And here's another one of the same theme. This is like an ambulance the kids built that said free health care for everyone and uh, access to public washrooms. And the other two themes were laugh. We, the world needs more laughs and more love. So here it is. We spend a whole month building all the floats and costumes and banners. There's some of the members of the art squad uh, carrying the banner at the beginning. And it was very participant led. Like we don't decide as staff or me as an artistic director, what does the world need? Uh, even though I could probably take a few guesses, especially now. I mean, it's, you know, there's always some sort of conflict or war or something, environmental disasters and things. But uh, this was like really led by participants. So it's an expression of, the, of what they believe the world needs. So here, and then you know, the, the parade was divided up into different sections like love. Uh, so people were walking, cheering. It's very festive. And it's also like, I think the only parade I know of that if you're like on the sidelines, you're welcome to join. You don't have to register or anything. You can just, if you, if you stumble across it or if you live along the parade route, you can just join and, and walk in or just, you know, arrive. Here's, uh, here's the housing float. Uh, the, people are also bringing their own, um, their own like handmade signs into the, into the event. And here's like the environment. Here's, this is a giant like waterfall full of clean water. That was like, uh, it was like kind of like a big like upright conveyor belt. And there's the laughs. The toilet ended up in the laughs section of the parade. Uh, it should have been, I think it was meant to be in human rights because everyone should have access to a, a washroom, but it kind of, uh, you know, straddled both, both uh, those themes. And then of course, people are allowed to make floats that are, you know, that they might be passionate about like cats and dogs. And here's just an overhead shot from some of the, you know, just the sort of parade procession. It just walks around the, uh, the residential streets of West Broadway. Uh, now, that same year, this is September 2019, there was a massive climate strike event. Way more people at that than at our parade. There was like, you know, I don't know, tens of thousands of people there. I heard, I heard there was like really vast numbers. I don't, you know, it was too many people to really count. So we wanted to get involved in that and uh, bring something positive that we could rally around. So we made a gigantic uh, globe. Here's, here's one of our staff and volunteers that built the structure for it. And then in the workshop, participants got working on like applying paper mache and then painting, painting the actual globe. And the reason we picked this is because we could have been negative and had like a politician or somebody whose decisions are, you know, causing like, you know, making the situations worse, worse for the environment. But we wanted to make a, a symbol of what we're all really rallying around, which is our home, the earth. And we, we attached that. And then there was also other uh, things like animal masks and endangered, endangered species animal masks and lots of signs being produced uh, to go and take into the walk. So we just had to acknowledge that everybody can agree, whatever, uh, you know, their political background or beliefs, that we all live on earth and we should protect it. So the caption for this thing was live where you love. Um, no, sorry, it was love where you live. And that was sort of, you can see it floating over there over the earth. And uh, that sort of, as soon as it, as it arrived, it kind of got, pushed to the front of the parade, drummers surrounded it. And it really like, um, it really like uh, became like a symbol that the crowd uh, seemed to rally around. So we always like to sort of attack these, these themes in a way that's really honest and upfront, but also uh, in as positive and, and colorful a manner as possible. And here's some of the teenagers walking around there. Those are like, you know, the, we've got a lot of young activists these days that are really good about getting their message out. And this is sort of just more of more of the crowd all rallied around that uh, around the ledge at, at the end of that event. But we also get to, we have good relationships with a lot of folks who are leading social justice movements. And so because we have an art studio with like cardboard paint and tarps and all kinds of space and projectors and things, uh, we uh, get called on to supply signs for people who are organizing, but they don't have the studio space or the supplies to actually make some of these things uh, for their events to communicate the messages. So we, we have made ourselves avail available to uh, help with, with those sorts of events. Uh, here's a recent one, BIPOC families uh, against police violence. So um, 
you know, I think we can all agree that like the situations that happen out there don't need to be happen and people don't need to be killed over some of the, uh, you know, over some of the situations that are, that are happening outside out there in the community. And there's better ways of, of addressing, uh, issues and problems and conflicts that happen. Uh, this last, uh, September was the, uh, in the lead up to the first inaugural, uh, national day for truth and reconciliation. We made a bunch of uh, banners, uh, painted banners for people to carry uh, to various events, like the big powwow that happened in St. James Park, or St. John's Park, rather. And so our, 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 we did a bunch of screen printing and painting and prepared these. A lot of the kids still weren't fully vaccinated, so we didn't feel it was safe to bring them in person to that event. But we just wanted to show that they can be involved in creating work that, could, that would be taken there by other folks, particularly a lot of like uh, old folks and survivors uh, that wouldn't have the capacity to create these kinds of paintings and banners on their own in their own spaces, but but we could provide that. So that's what we did. And then um, and then uh, these were uh, given to different groups to carry in the event. So obviously it was part of like, just one part of a way bigger uh, event. And um, you know, that that's the first annual and there was like tremendous, uh, turnout. And so I think we can look forward to like more engagement there. And, um, I think maybe involving the kids more like directly in, in showing up to some of these events, uh, hopefully after, after COVID is resolved. Uh, now I'm showing you an example of a guest artist workshop here, Nena Okori, who came up here from Chicago. And Nena's workshop is very similar to what we're going to do today. And it's about taking essentially like responsibility for our trash. And instead of throwing it away, we actually make an art installation or art objects out of it. And then we keep it instead of like, uh, just throw it away in the garbage where it disappears. And we don't think about it anymore, but it still exists. So her workshop was called, You Are What You Trash. This is an example of Nena's artwork. So that's like a whole bunch of like, basically discarded fabric and plastic bags and stuff that's like melted down and then spun into this like material. It's kind of like uh, like burlap or like a cheesecloth or some sort of stringy material that gets produced and then she, she dyes it and then creates these huge installations in galleries. So th that was the inspiration for this workshop. So we got working on this and manipulating all the different layers of materials uh, and ironing it together and basically taking all this stuff that would have been otherwise thrown away and then, and then making a giant uh, like installation out of it. And some people started using the materials for their own personal cool art objects like like this girl made a purse you know but that's just part of the art city workshop is there's always room for people to just put their own spin on things or just goof around with the supplies and hang out and try to until we get them back on track so here's uh more of the work developing and what we ideally try to do is use materials that wouldn't have otherwise been recycled uh but, but the things that maybe just for some reason are altered some way so they're not recyclable anymore. Like, you know, when you paint cardboard, it, you, you, all of a sudden that's not recyclable, like if there's latex paint on it. So that is garbage. And that's this all got woven together and put together. There's a lot of plastic bags ironed on and, um, and used to create these things. And here's uh, the sort of final installation that was created during that week. And here, uh, this is the art, the, um, sustainability audit that I referred to earlier that Chantel was present for and Josep uh, from Green Action Center came and we did a big consultation that was really in the spirit of one of our youth council workshops and Josep led that process where there was a bunch of like exercises on how to like evaluate waste, sort waste, uh, knowing what should, can be recycled versus what can be um, uh, thrown in the garbage and then composted and then he came back later, uh, you know, what part of that was actually, we dumped out our garbages and sorted what actually had ended up in the garbage can. And then he came back later with a report that let us know that the vast majority of our garbage actually doesn't, isn't garbage. It, it should be composted. So that actually, and ever since then, and this is like, this happened in February of 2020. This is really just a matter of weeks before, you know, March and then, and then everything, uh, you know, the pandemic arrived. But it had a major impact on us, and ever since then, we've been diverting almost all of that uh, to um, all the all the paper towels we're using for our hands into compost. So, 
I think at this point I'm going to stop because this kind of brings us back to what what this okay because I saved one single kit for me to use here because I, I thought maybe everybody would, would have a chance to get one so I'm going to dump it out and you're going to see just some of the stuff that that is packed in there so it's a combination of like mixed media okay and mixed media just refers to like a, a random assortment of, of art materials here let me fix the camera so you can see that a bit better I'll put my so, you know, there's things that you might typically have in your lunch. Like there's like a napkin and a plastic fork. Plastic forks are terrible. A napkin, if it's super dirty, I don't think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Chantel, because you, you're the person from Green Action Center. But if it's super dirty, you probably can't recycle it. Uh, maybe compost it, but the plastic fork is not. You, that, that's just basically garbage because it's a, this is a, what you call a single use plastic. But I included it because we, we use so many of these things. I also included like a granola bar, because I don't know, I don't think the wrapper is like, after you eat this, the wrapper is just garbage. And then the, uh, and then a, a drink box. And I think maybe the drink box is recyclable, but Santel, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong. So these are the kind of things that you're going to get in your kit. And then you can just, you sort of like, I even included the plastic wrapping from the drink boxes. Cause I just want to think about every little piece of garbage or trash that we are creating. Now, in anticipation of this, I thought, you know, if, if we're all eating lunch together at the same time, well, I should also have a lunch and, and the garbage from the lunch. So what I did yesterday, um, what I did yesterday is I went to Junior's up the street, which I love. I can't eat there all the time. I'm getting too old for, to be able to eat it too much, but yeah, I went and um, got a fat boy combo. Uh, oh, yes? No, that's no, a great that's place, place to go. go. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love it. <laughs> my favorite place to get a burger in the neighborhood and so uh so i anyway i got like a vanilla shake and french fries and then i bought a french fries for somebody else too so i've got a couple of like french fry uh containers and like a very greasy bag this is what happens when you go there is like all the food starts to like grease up the bag and i don't know if this is recyclable anymore after it went once once it gets to this point maybe compost but i just wanted to like present all the different things that we often eat for lunch then all of a sudden we throw everything into the original bag. Uh, I've done it. I've been guilty of it before. And you huck that in the garbage. So it's not recycling. Uh, it's it's actually, even if there's recyclables in that bag, nobody at the recycling plant is going to end up sorting through that mess and and, um, and recycling. And it looks like Chantel confirmed that, yeah, you can't recycle this anymore. So it's not no, good. So, not anything that has anything grease, that on grease on it, on it? It's, not, it's not. Yeah, same goes for pizza boxes, right? Yeah, yeah. And then what about this, like the wrapper from my fat boy here, it's got, I, I, I try to give it a bit of a rinse, but it's pretty gnarly. And like I, I, this foil on one side and paper on the other side, is that recyclable or is this garbage? Anyway, I saved the napkins, even the receipt that says, that says, you know, juniors, uh, <laughs> fat boy, uh, large shake, small fries. So I just basically what I want to do in the next few minutes that we have is just start trying to like make a, a pet out of this. And it, it doesn't have to be a pet. It could literally be a sculpture. Honestly, I'm starting to have ideas that I could turn this, this foil into some kind of a, like a trophy and this like this, um, you know, uh, milkshake container could end up being cut up and, and used for like a trophy stand. So I don't know, maybe I'll do that and then I'll put like googly eyes on it. But uh, yeah. So this is, this is kind of what I'm getting at is like punish yourself. <laughs> I mean, usually I like to try and do like a really positive workshop, but um, you know, meaning like we're not going to highlight the problem. We're going to actually fast forward to the solution. Like we did with what the world needs now and say, what do we need? Not this parade isn't about what's wrong. This parade is about what we need to make it right. You know, and that's, that's what all the, the depictions of all the floats were, were based on. So, so, um, but yeah, I mean, um, but I think it's just a fun way to like put this together, make something that's going to stay in your office or your environment as a reminder of like what, how much garbage are we creating every day when we, when we eat lunch? So does that make sense? Great. So I'm, I'm just going to sort of like, everybody should have got a tape also in their kit and you will, if you don't have a kit, which I know, I don't think many of you do, but I didn't suppose that you had hot glue to fasten all this stuff together. If you have uh, the ability to have hot glue guns out, yeah, that's great. 
hot glue is really fast and really great and very versatile and we rely on it often at Art City. One thing that we uh, did last summer is we realized that every time we're using hot glue, hot glue is basically just kind of a plastic that melts and then holds things together and dries. So if you have extra bits of hot glue, that's just plastic that you're creating and throwing into the environment into garbage. So we want to avoid that. So I didn't, I wasn't going to use hot glue today, but you can do that. It's easier to make a sculpture with that than it is with tape. But I just thought, okay, let's just do what we can with tape. So I'm going to start, start working. And I'll just go on for a few minutes. You can ask me questions. I should be able to talk and work at the same time. Yeah, googly eyes. I put a couple of googly eyes in the kit. Because it's important to bring bring the thing that you make. Uh, uh, it's important to make it alive, you know? Good, yeah, there's just a, there's some stickers in there. If you're a teacher, you hopefully you've got a drawer full of fun stickers, uh, you know, and th those can be used too. Here we go, single-use plastic straw, you know? And I think, I don't even know if this lid's uh, recyclable or not. Maybe the, no, it's not. Is this, it's all waxy. Is that recyclable? No. See, it's a bunch of garbage. <laughs> it, it, the, the, inner the inner lining, lining of, it, of it, it makes it, it makes not. Yeah, see. <laughs> But, but you know what, at work, people are always going to McDonald's and getting those big like iced coffees and things. And then I find them in our recycling all the time. And I know those are recyclable because they're still like, yeah, there's it's still like, stuff in my, it. My, 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 it's, it's, it's recyclable. Okay, good, yeah. <laughs> so maybe like, I love juniors. I don't really want to stop eating there. I also am guilty about the amount of garbage that is created from eating there. So maybe I should just like email them or phone them or tell them, why don't you guys start using like compostable cups? You know, like it's probably more yes, expensive, yes. but like. A.W. Actually, actually just created, created the first, first compostable, compostable cup. cup. No, yes. Maybe that's, so, maybe that's so, the other thing. thing. Yeah, I mean, so so that, I think, I think like uh, being being really straight up with the places that we like to eat. And if they're not, if they don't have good practices, trying to encourage that for the sake of just keeping your, 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 your business too. And just, you know, being able to go and enjoy, uh, more burgers and shakes and fat boys guilt-free in the future. Oh, well, never mind the fact that it's the beef industry. So that's a whole other issue, but you know, I'm just talking about for, for the sake of this workshop, I'm taking, I'm, I'm just talking about the garbage that gets made. So hopefully, uh, that makes sense. So I will, uh, start just kind of like assembling things and let me know if there's any more questions. Yeah, bring your own travel mug. That's a good one. But don't forget your travel mug half full of coffee everywhere you go, because that's another issue over here too. I always have. There's. I always find half full co travel mugs full of cold coffee. So I'm going to fashion myself a something or other here. Let's see. Actually, wait. Eddie, Eddie um, um, we got a quick question. Sure. It's very interesting. Volunteer okay. too. So, what is this for? Uh, you're asking about uh, how do you get involved as a volunteer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, we um, we just take we have an intake process. There's a volunteer form on the website, uh, and there also there's also like paper forms that we that we have on hand if someone just drops by and wants one. So okay, people okay. fill that out because not everybody who wants to be involved volunteering wants to necessarily work directly with the kids. Some right, people right. want to come here in the day and help like with, with other stuff. Like one of the kids who, who grew up coming here had moved away, but then is back in town and had some time um, in their day to like help volunteer. So we got them to like patch the drywall and like sand it and then paint it over the last couple of days, which has been really awesome. So um, there's lots of different ways to volunteer, but if you want to volunteer during programming, it's really just about making a generally like a weekly commitment, like say, oh, well, I want to volunteer on Fridays, uh, you know, during, uh, indigenous art program. And I can commit to being there from like, you know, three 30 to seven 30. And then, you know, like, uh, just, just the understanding that, you know, you may have to like cook snack or help clean the kitchen or you just help people with their art projects. Look at Chantel. Chantel is really going to town here. This is great. I'm like, I'm barely doing anything. Chantel, you can be the person. Yeah, this is good. You, you're the example. You're making the stuff, and I'm. I can just go ahead and keep talking. But does that answer your question? Like, yeah, there's there's people like there's intake, and if you're interested, you could always email. Uh, yeah, you know, all the information's on our website. 
Yeah, I guess yeah, I guess so. Are there any, any happen up in the near short distance, distance that are that our student volunteers? Is there anything? What was that? In the, in the near or near distant future that our student volunteers, volunteers here. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, like, like I, I guess the reason I brought up Friday is because we actually seem to be short volunteers on Fridays these days. And, and, you know, so, you know, there are needs. And then we have some people like already in the queue for, um, for volunteering, like, like when you when you fill out an online volunteer form, it goes to the website. And then and then somebody whoever's coordinating volunteers here, will see it and then like read it and then respond to you with like, we have availability here or here. And, and, you know, are you available on a certain day? Like we need people for say Mondays and Fridays in the workshop or at an outreach site, you know, like sometimes we need people to come along for to, to, to various outreach sites to help, um, help with that. Because if it's super busy and we only have like two staff there, then, it, then it's, it's a better quality workshop if there's more help, you know? Um, and then of course there's like bigger events like the parade comes along and it, it, it's helpful to have more, uh, more volunteer hands, like say during June, when there's a lot more like like prep going on, and you know. So I, okay, I that's yeah, it, that's but yeah, I mean, if you're interested, I mean, that's how I got involved with Art City is is I started volunteering back in the day, like back in like you know spring 2003. You know, some friends of mine had like been involved for like basically since the beginning, and they were like. Eddie, you know, you're great with kids. You went to art school, you know what you're doing. Like, it would be great to get you involved in Art City. And I was kind of just too distracted at the time. Finally, they just pressured me until I I, I got involved. And um, it was such a great, I mean, as soon as I became involved, I was like, I just loved it. And it, it's been like, I've been involved ever since. And now I'm one of the, I've been one of the directors for the last, you know, uh, anyway, I mean, I guess it's been like a decade or something or more. And, um, even before that, I was, you know, I've been working here, like, uh, you know, I've, anyway, I've been involved for like 20 years. So if that, if that tells you anything, it's been a lot of fun. But I, most of the people did show up here first as a volunteer. Okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to cram this in here. I'm trying to make myself a trophy for uh, like a, you know, environmental stewardship trophy or something or a, gar a garbage trophy. Any other questions? Here, look, this is kind of. I think I Michelle has. has... <laughs> She's beating me. She, this is so good. That's a, that's a legit garbage pet. Well done. Well done. Not sure what to do with the plastic <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's like maybe maybe it's wielding a fork or something. I don't know. Those are arms. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to make it look like it was a weightlifting. That's pretty cool. I'm trying to make the handles on my uh, trophy out of this lid that I just tore in half. Yeah. Yeah. But you know. What, anyway, you, you guys will all just be able to make whatever you want, or lead lead a group in making whatever you want. And it's it's not about making it perfect, but just about making something that like is a reminder uh, to like try and as much as we can to cut down on the garbage that we're creating. And almost the, the more horrible looking this thing is, the better. I mean, what Chantel is making is actually something I would like to have in the office, and you know. <laughs> it's like, hey, you know, like let's make more garbage so we can have more of these uh, fun garbage pets. So here, here you can sort of see I'm trying to like, here I'm actually gonna, yeah. See, I'm trying to create this like the trophy. You see, with the handles, like it's like kind of like a cup. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, like the gray cup or whatever, or the Stanley cup. So I realize that we're getting down to the last few minutes. And um, is there any other questions uh, or comments before before we got to wrap up? Right. So there's, there's my, my garbage, garbage bat. bat. It's so good. That's like a complete <laughs> victory. It's awesome. So yes, do what Chantel did. That's like the best. That's the best example. I, I really, you know, 
Looks like a milk. Like no. It's like what? Like what? Looks like, Looks a, like gnome. a gnome. A gnome. Ah. <laughs> okay, here. At least I, I just I just put the eyes on my trophy character. So now it's alive. So there we go. <laughs> Uh, this is fun. So yeah, this has been a lot of fun and I'm really like, I hope that, that it was useful information for you all and that this activity, even though it's kind of gnarly and you have to like, you know, I, I just, you know, use a fat boy wrapper to make a, a trophy. Um, I hope that you all can, uh, can enjoy that and just get, get messy and sort of like, just, you know, not, not be super nervous about the stuff that you're handling, but just get in there and have fun with it. And it's really about just, you know, making a statement for yourself. And having fun while you're doing it. So yeah, I mean, I uh, yeah, I really appreciate uh, everyone who is here today, and I'm glad you're listening and interested. And I hope you enjoyed the activity, and that you will go ahead and have fun with it. And Chantel, you you rocked it. <laughs>